let's start with the first part of this course, essentially. So, we looked at the unit outline, we discussed assignments and all those kinds of things. Our studio we've actually covered, how to install this. We'll be looking at our markdown later in this first week. This really makes preparation of documents a lot easier and I'll strongly encourage all of you to try this. It's not at all very difficult. And in the lab classes, you'll be using your own laptop. So unlike some other units where you have the lab classes in the large mathematics computer lab, I have actually scheduled the lab classes in smaller rooms of, with size about 40 or so with one instructor. So you have access to that instructor. Your own, only your class is in that room. You can use your own laptops, which means you can save all material as you do this on your own machines. So we'll start off by looking at what we call linear stats models. The usual one that's first met is what we call normal regression, where we're assuming something about the distribution of data being normal. And we'll cover the details of how this actually works out in practice. So, first of all, here are some examples. There are many situations where we're trying to find the relationship between two or more variables. So here's an example. La Quinta Motor Inns is a moderately priced hotel chain, and they're looking to see which locations make the most profit. So location is one of, one of the most important aspects of location of hotel industry. So they did the, did the right thing here. They hired consultants who then collected data over three years on 57 established inns belonging to La Quinta. So they didn't rush this. This is a proper job over here. Good practice, taking data over a long period of time and hiring consultants, those who know what they're doing. And an regression analysis revealed the following here. The predicted profit was equal to 39.05 minus, there's a bit of typing problem over here, I'll fix this afterwards. But they had here something to do with state population, the tariff, the room rate over here, the uh, college students, the number of college students in thousands within a 6.5 kilometer radius, and the medium income of these things. Now, the, as I say, the equations unfortunately messed up here, I'll fix this afterwards, so you can look at this online. You might expect that the traffic, the tariff will have some impact on the profit. You might also uh, maybe guess that maybe college students might have some effect, although you might wonder why. But how on earth would they pick up something like state population? And more than that, not just medium, in medium income, but the square root of median income. How to pick up these kinds of things in a model? This is the kind of thing we'll be looking at here and later in this course as well. How do you actually select variables to be in the model and how do you select what uh, particular variables, what, how you transform the variables to make the model work? So it does predict here that the profit really increase when the tariff and the number of college students increases. Well, those are the positive uh, coefficients. And when the state population and medium income decrease, so there's a negative here in front of state population and a negative here in front of medium income. So with lower state populations and lower medium incomes, the profit actually increases. This is interesting. Another example is this uh, pharmaceutical chain called a chain called Pharmex. So what they're looking at is determine the effectiveness of the promotional activities. So they've collected data from 50 of the outlets, randomly selected, and the two variables only here. Promote is Pharmax's promotional expenditure as a percentage of that of its leading competitor, and sales again is as a percentage of that of its leading competitor. So the objective here is to quantify the relationship between the promotional expenses and their sales. So how do we do this? We'll do this later on here. So regression is the study of relationships between two variables or more than two variables. Now simple linear regression involves only two, what we call the independent or explanatory variable or, and the other y is the dependent or response variable. So essentially we're thinking that y is in some way related to x and we're looking at only straight line relationships here. The data will be pairs, 
So there will be a value of the independent variable and the value of the response as a pair, and so on and so forth. We're going to try and find in some way what is often called a line of best fit between the y and the x values here. As an example here, a simple example, let's take a look at x as the height of a person and the y is the weight of the person. So here we expect that the taller persons will weigh a bit more. Now, of course, people of the same height can have very different weights. So on average, though, as height increases, weight also increases. If I can draw a quick graph over here of what the situation may be like, here is the height of a person, and here is the weight. So the data may look a bit like this. And so you might think that I can put in a straight line here to be able to find the relationship between the x and the y, in this case the height and the weight. And there's here my, my line of best fit. So the idea here of the line of best fit is for any particular height I pick over here, it gives me a weight over here, what we might call the fitted weight by the equation of regression, or also called the predicted weight. However, what we're getting here is the mean weight for that height. The mean weight corresponding to height, or the height we picked over here. Let me call this H1. But around that mean, mean weight, I'll get some variation. So we can have people of the same height having different weights. And that's what this variation here will be all about. What we're going to assume here is the variation I'm going to see in the, in the weights over here for people of the same height has a normal distribution. It's normally distributed. So there's a mean over here that's given by the equation of regression but otherwise the variation is going to be normal around that mean. And you might very well get some outliers. By that I mean you might find somebody who is actually quite short, but actually does weigh a bit more. And you might find somebody who is quite tall, but quite lanky, and actually might weigh a bit less, maybe a bit less than that even, somewhere here, for example. Maybe that's too long. But you can see what I'm saying here, that you'll get variations in weight depending on height. So. What the regression tries to do is explain how the, height, how the height affects weight, or explain how the weight depends on height. But it also then measures how the randomness here is also. In other words, I want to also measure some idea of how the randomness is, is here. Measure the randomness, in other words, or the variation in weight as well. So that's the basic idea here. Now, mathematically speaking, there's an example here. And the simple Gaussian or normal linear regression model is something like this. My yi is, for example, 9.5 plus 2.1 times xi. And there's some error involved here. The error here, sometimes called residual as well, or sometimes called random variation. I'm assuming this is normal. The mean is zero because the mean actually has been captured by this model over here, the equation. And the variance is sigma squared. This sigma squared is constant. I don't have this depending on i at all or anything else. I'm assuming the variance is constant. So, as I was saying earlier, here's my x values along the x-axis and y values over there. And for any value of x, I have a mean value, sometimes called e of y i, for those who have done more probability and stats. I won't go through this in detail here, but there's a mean value here that's given by my regression equation. So that's the mean here that's given by my regression equation. And I can call this the expected value of y, I, the mean of y. I don't get lost in the notation. I'm just saying this is the mean. This is the notation used if you've done this before. And around that mean, there is some variation here that is normal. And that variation here has mean zero because the mean, as I said, was captured by the equation of regression. And the variance is the same. So this normal distribution here and here is exactly the same but just shift it up and down depending on my line. The same normal distribution, the same variance.
so basically this is the model. I've got y i is some mean plus some enumeration. The mean here will have in general uh, it, it, I'll pick the form of the mean here, but the general univariate stats model is essentially this. Y i is the observable observ observ value or, or response value. It has some mean and some enumeration. The mean here in the regression is going to be selected as something like a plus b x i. In some other models, I might select the mean differently, but in regression, the mean is simply a straight line relationship with respect to x i. So linear regression assumes that mu i or the mean here is a linear function of x i. That is, the mean value of y i is beta naught plus beta one x i. Straight line equation here. Now x y i is the response, x i is the explanatory or independent variable, beta naught is the intercept term, beta 1 is the slope, and epsilon is the error over here or an deviation. <coughs> and the way it works is, if I can draw a quick graph over here, uh, back over here will be fine I think, if I were a straight line equation that looks like that, Then when x is 0, y is equal to a. So there is my a over here. That's what we call the intercept. That's the same as beta naught here. And if I change x by 1, so x, for example, is 0 over here. And if x is 1 over here, the value of y here is a, and the value of y here will be a plus b. So the slope here, or the b here, is the change in y for a unit change in x. If b is positive, when I increase x by 1, the y will increase by 1. If b is negative, then my graph will look like this. In that case, what happens is, if I change x by 1 this way, my y will decrease by this much, which is my b. So, the b here, the slope here, indicates the change in y for a unit change in x. If I increase x by 1, then my y will change by b. If b is positive, that means y increases. If b is negative, that means y decreases. We'll deal more with, more with this as we go through. But the basic concept is this. b is the slope. It indicates the rate of change of, in y with respect to x. If I change x by 1, it tells me that y will change by b, positive or negative. The assumptions here are that I'm selecting here a linear model, a straight line model. I'm assuming that the straight line model is appropriate. So if my data looks like this, for example, then a straight line model isn't appropriate, more like some kind of curve over here. So I'm assuming that to start off with that I'm looking at something that's straight line. My data is going to be appropriately modeled by a straight line. The second is, and these things here are normally distributed. They have a constant variance. The variance doesn't change. And they're uncorrelated. If there's correlation in the data, then the modeling doesn't quite work as well. And we'll see how these things can be checked afterwards. So those are the assumptions here. And all of those four assumptions need to be checked. Now, essentially, as I was saying earlier, we, we're uh, assuming that uh, the epsilon i here, the error terms, are normal with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. There's a constant variance. This iid stands for independent and identically distributed. I don't want to go through the details of this kind of mathematics here. For those it, for whom it makes sense, great. For those who doesn't make what quite make sense here, the main thing is that we are assuming the error terms are going to be normal with mean 0, variance sigma squared, they're independent. And then it says IID, independent and identically distributed. In other words, they, all, they have all of them the same distribution, which is normal, not mean 0, variance sigma squared. So we'll probably be using this term IID quite a bit, which is why I'm making this acronym over here. 
Independence is one of those fundamental assumptions in data and statistics. It makes life a lot easier. When data aren't independent, they can't be modeled so easily or straightforwardly. Other forms of modeling are required there. So, you'll get familiar with these ideas as we go through here. I'll stop there for a second, and we'll come back in the third lecture and take a look at the modeling for this Pharmax data. Bye.